you know there there has been a popular debate between willpower versus destiny lots of friends have asked me sir how would you define willpower versus destiny and in my own experience which then i um, checked in some of the ancient scriptures also because i tend to do that whatever is happening in my own chidakash in my own inner world of consciousness after getting stabilized into that i do check what the scriptures talk about in this respect and i've just started to do that just to see that you know did the ancient sages or the masters wrote talked about experience the same thing or is it different yeah so anyway so so the difference between will power or destiny or the debate between will power and destiny so in my own experience which is then collaborated with the ancient wisdom from the scriptures says that a, an awakened action and awakened action done in the present moment with an absolute awareness using your highest will power has the potential and the strength to cut through all the chains of destiny that's the reality yeah that is the reality so using my will power and if there is a certain awakening i am experiencing or if i am not experiencing the awakening then guide i take the guidance from the wise ones and i with an absolute clarity with an absolute awareness the action that i take in the present moment in this moment when my mind when the monkey is not jumping in the future or in the past in this moment when i take the action awakened action aware action then that has the strength to cut through all the chain chains of past births or or whatever destiny whatever we want to call it that's the power of will that's the strength of will power so in the indian tradition we say that for the awakened one there is no destiny the awakened one has has moved beyond all destinies even planetary effects so to say even the star signs so to say he's cut through all the past karmas in one shot possible absolutely possible of course there are some technical details to that will not go into that in today's session that's not the topic of discussion today but that's possible now how do we activate this will power to channelize in the right direction life is simple so are the ways of life it's there's nothing complicated this whole world of inner chidakash inner consciousness is i think the most simplest in the direct path there's no complication about it yeah if you just start to connect the dots so the great yogi of india uh, which a lot of friends in the west also follow patanjali some of some of you who explored the dimensions of yoga i'm sure have heard about patanjali 2000 years ago this man formulated the steps of yoga following which one can attain to the ultimate in one of the satsangs i talked about the first sutra or the first step he gave was a step called yam today 
I'll refer to the second step that he says. The second step of the eightfold path of Ashtang Yoga given by Patanjali. The second he says, and that's something we've been talking about, you know, since the beginning of this session today, is Niyam. The second stage of the yoga as per Patanjali is Niyam. Extremely strong, extremely relevant. And what is this Niyam? Niyam means, in a very simple, basic language, non-complicated language. Niyam means a disciplined daily routine. That's it. It's a funny thing that if I start to follow Niyam in my daily life, a disciplined daily routine, I'm not using the word strict. There's a reason. Because the moment we use the word strict daily routine, then it's like we've made a frame and we've, we're fitting ourselves into that frame. Strict frame with boundaries. No, no, life is not a fixed frame. Life doesn't have any boundaries. We're talking about Chida Kash, the, the boundless, endless sky of inner consciousness. So how can there be frames, strict frames around this boundless sky of inner consciousness? Of course, there can't be. Hence, I'm not using the word strict. I'm using the word disciplined. What is discipline? That which is based on a deeper understanding. Yeah. So if somebody has, a has let's say, diabetes, you deeply understand that I have diabetes. And now since you deeply understand the repercussions of that, you make a discipline to keep away from sugar. Not as a commandment, not as a strict commandment. Because if you make it into a strict commandment, then your mind will start to drift to sugar again and again and again and again. Yeah. So, I'll tell you a funny story. There, there was this master and of course a disciple with him. And disciple is kind of an eagerness to attain. So every few days he just goes back to the master and says that, Sir, I've got it. I'm enlightened, I've got it. Yeah? As, as many of us do or feel in certain moments. So, and you know, masters are masters, you know. They have the ability to just see through your entire being. You, you kind of naked in front of them. Just looking into your eyes, a wise one would know where you stand and what's your inner reality. So, so this disciple goes to the master, says that, Sir, I've got it. I've got the stillness of the mind. It's not moving. I've observed this. There's no content in the mind anymore. Master says, sure. Just do one small thing. For 30 minutes, go back to your meditation. Just sit. One condition. Do not think about the monkey. Rest, everything is fine. Even if your thoughts goes here and there, it's fine. Even if you experience contentlessness, it's fine. But just do not think about the monkey. That is the only condition. And that will be the exam, so to speak. Disciple goes sits at his designated spot, closes his mind, I mean, closes his eyes, and the first thought comes is a monkey. He closes his mind, eyes again, tries to see what's going on, observe. Suddenly, a monkey appears in the blank slate of the mind. Perturbed, he goes back to the master, says, Sir, what's going on? You've spoiled my sadhana. So far there was no monkey and now you've introduced monkey into my sadhana. My mind is filled with monkey. So master smiles and just says, Do not believe your illusions to be your enlightenment. Do not trust. 
your illusions to be your wisdom. Thank you.